Hello, folks. We are going to do some exercise for our bodies. Uh, this would be the beginning of a bar burn class, which it not would be. It actually is. There's no conditional with that. And I'm just going to record the first half, and then the second half, I'm going to turn off the recording, and just the people in the room get to do it. Inhale, lift, and open. And exhale, bend your knees, release. Inhale, open your heart, open your lungs. Open your chest and exhale, let it go. I'm very excited about your dog, Caroline. Inhale, lift and open and exhale. As a new, two new cats in the house owner, I just recommend getting more pets if you're a pet person. And then shake this one down, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. <sighs> relax your neck and tongue, relax your face. Again, inhale, fill up as if you're breathing into every cell in your body. Deep cellular breathing, and then shake, shake, shake. Shake out all the shit. Shake out all the tension. Shake out all the weird. <laughs> Let it go. Inhale, lift and open. And exhale, taking it all the way down with the shake again. <laughs> and one more. Inhale, you're muted already. Lift and exhale. Shake, 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 shake. We're going to spiral. So that was movement in the vertical plane, this up and down vertical plane. Now we're going to spiral in the horizontal plane. Ha! Ah, giving your lungs and your diaphragm some mobility. This is also going to stimulate your lymphatic system. And we have lymph nodes that are inside, in front of our spine, in the back, in front of our I would imagine they're in front of our ribs as well, but I'm not entirely sure with that. They have to be if they're in front of our spine. So yeah, in here, there's a whole bunch and spiraling is gonna help free them up. And if we get kind of blocked in them, it's gonna be hard for us to spiral. Spiraling, very important. And then we're gonna have a little modern dance moment. We're gonna reach up, bend your knees, circle back and circle it back up. So coming down, bend and bring it back up. Use your breath, arms over your head, exhale. So then we're in the sagittal plane. That's why we had to do this. So we started in the vertical plane, we moved to the horizontal plane, and now we're in the sagittal plane, up and down. And if you're just starting, maybe don't do this full out. On the next one, we're gonna go down and stay down there. Open your feet wider and shift from side to side, freeing up your spine from your tail to your head, let it go. Ah, easy, loose in your body, shifting from side to side. Now, if you have a block, you're going to take your block out on the floor in front of you. If you're super hypermobile, which a lot of you are, and you don't need your block, you can also do this with no block. Although I kind of like it to be so that my back is kind of um, table topping. I'm going to arch, shoulders are going to rotate open, and then hollow, drop my head, curl, belly in. Inhale, knees bend, stick out your butt, open your chest. Exhale, hollow, push and curl. Inhale, arch. We could lift our toes on this. And then toes push down, dome up your instep. Inhale, arch. Exhale, curl, dome. Inhale, so think of your back and your foot kind of doing the same thing. It's like your foot is doing this arch, your back is doing an arch. And then as you round, you can think of almost doming up your instep as you're doing your back. Two more, arch, toes lift, open, exhale, curl, dome your foot and your spine. Last one, inhale, arch, exhale, hollow and curl. Get rid of your block, taking your hands inside of your feet, bending your knees over your toes parallel, and then tail up. This doesn't have to be your biggest stretch. Bending your knees over your toes. You don't need to go to straight legs here is what I'm saying, but if you're ready for it, then go for it. Bending your knees. What I'm more interested in is this plie. And then lengthening, working those big muscles of the legs. Down, up two more, halfway, and press. And the next one, you're gonna stick it out in the halfway point. You're just gonna take your weight forward, and backward. So head is reaching forward to the front of your foot, tail is reaching back towards your heel. You're shifting your weight forwards and backwards. 
I feel my quads really firing up on this, but also I'm feeling my peroneals and my calves, muscles in my lower leg, and then release, roll it all the way up, come up to the top. Ah, and let's go with circles with your pelvis. So big circles, mobilizing, thinking of your, the bowl of your pelvis, the container of your rib cage and your head all having some freedom. So you're not locking your head on top. And we have a writing response that's natural. You can see people always wanna have their head vertical, but see if you can let it go. Head, tail, freedom, freedom fries. And change direction, other way. And then one more thing up here, it's another cat cow. This is internal rotation. External rotation, we're going to internally rotate and scoop. Externally rotate and open. <sighs> Exhale, internal. Inhale, open it up. <sighs> if it's too much to add the legs, you can just do this with the upper body. However, most people probably could benefit from a little internal rotation in their legs, <sighs> especially if they have done a lot of dance or ice skating, or bicycle riding, anything like that. We want to have the tissue in our legs mobile so that it can go in different directions. So just a really quick discussion. We have a few different things that we can do. There's mobility, moving your body around, having capacity to move. Then there's strength, and then there's flexibility. And sometimes people confuse mobility with flexibility. Two different things. Mobility, I would say, does include the fascia and the joints and everything, but it's not about going to huge range of motion. It's just about lubricating, getting it going so you can move. All right, let's take it into a, we're going to do this downward dog. So you can inhale, lift all the way up and exhale, fold it forward. Just walk it out into your dog and then bend one knee and then the other, letting your hips really swivel. Swivel hips. Swivel just reminds me like of a 70s word, like we should be in some lounge, smoking cigarettes, swiveling our hips, and uh, drinking cocktails. I don't recommend smoking for anyone. It's just an image here. Inhale, heels high, scoop your belly in, round your spine, roll it forward, find your plank, and then drop your head, push with your arms, roll it up to the ceiling, lower your heels. Heels high, belly in, rolling it forward, rolling through your spine. Find your plank, push back with your heels, drop your head, roll it up to the ceiling, lower your heels. Heels high, scoop your belly in, roll it forward, strong plank, drop your head. Push, roll it up to the ceiling, lower your heels. Heels high, round your spine, roll it forward, find your strong plank, drop your head. Push, roll it up and lower. One more, up, roll it forward. This time we're gonna come all the way into an up dog. You can even put your knees on the ground if you want to. Just open your chest, open your lungs, open your heart, look up. And then bend your knees, take it back into a child's pose. Just roll a little bit side to side, let it go, soften and melt. Then shift your weight back towards your heels and roll it up. And let's take our legs out in front of us. And back of the hands towards each other, internal rotation and spiral. And we're actually gonna go through a little bit. So as we go through, think of really not overstretching in your deltoid and your rotator cuff, but opening up your pec, so your chest is pushing through. It's like that moment of, I'm gonna win the race, so my chest is gonna go through. That's it, <laughs> halfway down, inhale. I used to always tell people to stop here, but people are so shut down and closed in the front of their bodies that I think we need to open that back up. <sighs> inhale, open. Yeah, you're gonna win the race. Exhale, I think that's the best analogy for it. Chest gotta get through, <sighs> halfway down. Inhale, open. Exhale. Inhale, open. <sighs> Using your breath. Yeah. And think of as your arms are going back, feel the connection of your arms, like 
like you have this huge wingspan. Back of the hands towards each other, huge wingspan, moving forward and through. Just for variety, let's take it into vertical and, and with our spines and leave our hands slightly in front of us. So just so that we're starting to discern where are the arms, what does it feel like we're coming up? This would be a more conservative way of doing it, um, which is also really good. You're not moving the body quite as much. Now we're gonna spiral. Spiral, serve the sandwiches to one side of the room, halfway down, and then spiral, serve the sandwiches to the other side of the room. Inhale, open. Sharing and caring in the horizontal plane. Here, have some of my delicious sandwiches. I prepared them just for you. <laughs> what kind of sandwiches do we have? Well, there's definitely some lobster rolls on there and maybe some tuna salad, percassi. <laughs> I don't know, probably some ham and cheese. If we really want to go like full English, we're going to have some cucumber sandwiches with the corn with the crusts cut off. Inhale, open, exhale. Inhale, open, exhale. Inhale, open and take it down. Hands behind you. Inhale. You can also do this with your shoulders on the floor. So if you have any kind of wrist issues or if your back, if your um, wrists or shoulders are bothering you, lay down on the floor and just lift your pelvis. Otherwise, up. Taking it back, inhale, pushing through, exhale back. Inhale, exhale. See if you can scoot your butt all the way down and back through your arms. It may not work if your arms aren't that long. My butt hits the floor and drags along. There's a nice little sound with that. All right, pressing up, pulsing one, two, three, four, five, six, back of the body working. Feel your feet really fully connected. So the four corners of the feet, which doesn't make any sense, but it also makes sense. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and take it down. Yeah, it's funny. It depends on how your feet are shaped. So for me, I would say my four corners of the feet would be here, here, and here like that, but I think most people would think of it as here and here. So just depending on how your foot connects. Take it down to the floor, hands down by your sides. We're gonna do big leg circles or small leg circles. So work with what feels good to you in your body. I'm gonna go big, up, open, and taking it down. I'm gonna flex as I come out to the side, I'm gonna to look towards my feet as they go down. I'm taking my head to the floor, opening it out, and then following my feet. I feel like this gives my neck a chance to relax, but then I'm picking it up and down. Inhale, open. Exhale as you come together. So you kinda of want to inhale through the easy part and exhale through the more challenging part. Two more. Last one. Bring your legs up and just shake them out. Shake out your arms and legs. Free up your spine. <sighs> Inner body freeing up. Feel free to make sound. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> Ah, let it go. Drop your feet down. Very easy and loose, relaxed. Dropping your knees from one side to the other. You can open through the middle if that feels good. Let that massage through your glute. So if you need to take it a little deeper, you can cross over. You could do, the, do this like the whole... Um, modern dance version where you're circling out and up, or you can do it a little bit more fitness style, crossing over without that arky circle. It also depends on your environment. And then bring it in, knees towards your chest and a full spiral here, arms outside side. Feeling your hands like wings, wings of the heart, 
wings of the lungs. And if you want to make it harder, you can straighten your legs. And bring it in, feet down parallel. Take your hands down by your sides and lift your pelvis up. So we've gone from that, like, it's it's not the horizontal plane in terms of the actual reality planes, but in terms of our body, when we're doing that spiraling, if we impose it down onto the floor, that would be horizontal. And here we come into sagittal again, pressing the pelvis up. Let's take the arms over your head with an inhale, and then exhale as you come up. If you want, you can keep changing where your palms are facing. So if I do that, I'm gonna have them spiraling so that palms are gonna face up, palms are gonna face each other, palms are gonna face down, palms are gonna face out, which is just one way of getting a little bit of extra action in that rotator cuff, in the health of the fascia of your arm going in, right? We're moving our body around and then changing these positions. And then release and come down. And let's let our, this is a mobility exercise. Just circle your femur head in your hip socket and let your lower back relax. So in a perfect world, your arms are doing part of this work, stirring and steering. And you're going for a fairly decent range of motion, but you're very relaxed. Change direction. Allowing your body to be easy, softening and melting. Ha. And then let's take a quick happy baby pose, wiggling around in your baby. Letting your baby be free flow and happy, whatever that means to you. Hmm, what does a happy baby mean? In my own body, soft, easy body. And then roll yourself back and forth, rounding through your spine. If you want to make this a little more exciting, you can try to come up. You can make it bigger, really letting yourself roll. It, you could come up to standing and kind of go into that almost like shoulder stand. It's up to you. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Listen into your own body. And then let's, uh, let's come onto our sides. Let's come into a side plank. Um, I just have to remember this exercise before we do it. I think I know what it is. Yeah, we're gonna come onto our knee and our elbow of the bottom side. The other hand and foot are reaching out. We're gonna exhale in and then inhale, reach into the back space. Exhale, close, inhale, open. Exhale, close, inhale, open. Exhale, close, inhale, open. Exhale, close, inhale, open. Four more. Four, three, two, one, and relax. Flip it around to the other side. Yeah, really feeling into that arch. So we're getting a little bit of a back bend, crunch, back bend on this side position, great three dimensional activity. Switching to the other side. You could also do this without lifting your hip off the floor. So if you're having uh, issues in your shoulders or anywhere, feel free to do it lower down. Otherwise, you're up on your elbow and knee, crunching in, stretching out. <sighs> exhale, inhale, <sighs> exhale, inhale, <sighs> exhale, inhale, <sighs> four more, three, two, and really an extra couple more. One and another one, because I know I didn't count that evenly, and come down. And let's come into a straddle. 
So we were working our QL a little bit. We're gonna do it some more here with our hands behind our head. You can flex your feet. And if you're, you can also bring your legs in a little bit if that's helpful. It doesn't have to be your most open, but it can be your most open. I know, again, we have like some hypermobile people out there. Feel free to go with what feels good to you. We're gonna take our elbow to the floor and then inhale up. Exhale, inhale. If you can actively reach through your legs as you're doing this, so there's like active engagement stretching out and away, You can get a little bit more lengthening, a little more stretch. And take a second to relax. I am gonna let the coffee in my body descend. If we do, if we drink coffee and then we do all this stuff, like energy goes up, coffee goes up, everything goes up, also with eating. And it's something to think about like with our, uh, like acid reflux, that's usually your abdominals are trying to go up into your diaphragm. So we wanna also like let that descend. And so much bar burn ballet thinking is really pull up and in, but we also wanna have a sense that we're not drawing our organs up into our lungs. So we're gonna go further. Let's just take our hands here. So you're gonna kind of take your fingers around the bottom of your ribs. I'm digging my fingers in, and then I'm just gonna move a little bit from side to side very gently. If this feels painful, then it means you probably have some inflammation in there. We, one side, let's see, on your right is your liver, and that is a huge organ. So that is also a detoxifier of your body. You don't want to jam it so it doesn't, so it hurts, but you want to think of it having some mobility so that like your liver and diaphragm aren't stuck on each other. There's a sliding surface like a wet balloon. And the same thing on the other side. And our stomach is like up here. Ha. So we want to let that descend, let that go down. Now we're going to come back to this exercise. Flexing through your feet, take it out, reach through your arms, bring it in, and come up. Sideways, lengthen out, bring it in, up, sideways, lengthen, in, up. So this is very much a homolateral exercise, one side versus the other. Reach it out, in, up, side, reach it out, in, up, sideways, reach, in, up. Last one, sideways, reach, in, and come up. And let's bring the legs together, give it a break. Rotate in and out, bang them up and down. Let that tissue get all soft again. And this is something I think I need to talk about because, so I, I teach that class role play and I talk about your soft animal body. And one of my friends is like, Laura, nobody wants a soft body. Everybody wants a hard body. And I feel like I just need to reframe that idea that like a hard body is not going to be a supple, long lasting, able to move body. Our muscles, when they're not engaged, should be soft. They should be fluid. They should be easy. They shouldn't be like these little contracted like balls of tension, which I think is what I see a lot when I look at people who spend a lot of time in the gym without dropping down and letting go of that tension, right? So when the muscle's working, it's engaged, there's tension. And then when it's released, we're not holding that tension. It should be soft. All right. Soft bodies is actually what we want. We do not want hard bodies. Hard bodies don't have flexibility and agility. And yeah, you can look at the tension pattern that people are holding and it's like, ah, ah, let go of some of that stuff. We need it. The world needs a little bit less tension. All right, let's take it down with, a, with your block. You can do all of this without a block, but it's maybe more fun. It's actually easier with a block than it is without. So block under one foot, hands down by your sides. We're gonna inhale, lift. Trying to keep both hips even, and then exhale, fold and lower. Inhaling, pressing up, exhale down. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale. You can be soft and strong is what I'm trying to say. Inhale and press it up. Like if you look at like somebody who does Sistema, which is a Russian martial art, it's like the softest, most fluid body is gonna be the most effective body. Press it up, going one, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Take it down. Let's go to the other side. So shift, shift your block over so it's under your other foot. Going up and down first. Inhale up. Exhale, fold in the hips. Inhale, press. Exhale, fold. Inhale. So we're really working the back of the body, but we want to feel like we're evenly balancing. So our legs, inner thigh and outer thigh, are working evenly. If you feel like you're overly engaging your inner thighs, squeezing together, see if you can release it just slightly so that there's a balance between the work of the inner and outer thighs so that your leg is tracking parallel. Good. Going up to pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, hamstrings tend to be underworked for most people. And it's really hard in a mat class to get them worked that well, I think. So this is, this is a great exercise. Put the block back to your first side. Hands are down by your sides. You're going to press up, pushing so that your pelvis is between your shoulders and your knee. If it's down here, you're not going to get the whole work of your back as much. If that's all you got, that's fine. But if it's, we're working towards this. So the foot that's on the floor comes all the way up. We're going to make soccer ball, two beach ball size circles, outer circles, pointing through your toe, long straight leg, reach it out. And then flex your foot and change direction, reaching through your heel. And then point your toes, pulsing up for eight, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, come down or flex, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Take it all the way down. Before we do the second side, just shake it all out for a second. Shake, 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 let it go. Free up your spine and then switch it to the other side. Pressing it up. Foot that's on the floor comes up to the ceiling. Soccer ball to beach ball size, outward circles with a pointed toe, long straight leg. Think of your toe like a laser pointer and you're making a perfect circle on the ceiling. And then flex and change direction, reaching through your heel. The laser is now coming through your heel. And then point it. Pointed toes poking a hole through the ceiling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Flex. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fold it in. Come all the way down. Push your block out. Give it all a shake. And then another happy baby. In your happy baby, let yourself stretch out your hamstrings. Wiggle around. Let it go. I'm also stretching out my inner thighs a little bit. Breathe into it. So, yeah, I have one client that I was seeing, and he was asking me, how do I know how much I should stretch? Like, how far? How, what's the message from the body? And I always like to say, don't go beyond a six or a seven in intensity. Once you feel like you're getting to super intense, diminishing returns, especially as you get older. But it's a good thing to think about when you're young. All right, let's come up and just rock from side to side. Go ahead, stay down there and do your thing, Caroline. <laughs> just shifting side to side, let it go. Soften into it. Good, and then we're gonna flip into a downward dog and go through this little downward dog progression. So it's gonna be three-legged dog, knee to chest, three-legged dog, knee crosses under, three-legged dog, knee to shoulder. And we'll do it probably three times on each side. My shirt is like falling up when I go upside down. All right, so into your dog, taking one leg up to the ceiling as high as it can go, and then bringing it forward, knee into your chest. Inhale, poke a hole through the ceiling. Exhale, cross it under, knee to your elbow. 
Inhale up, knee to shoulder. Inhale, lift. Exhale, center. Inhale, lift. Cross it under. Inhale, lift. Outer shoulder. Third set. Lift, center, lift, cross, lift, open. This time you're going to put your foot on the floor. Open your chest up. Look up at the ceiling. You can spiral this more so you're really opening your chest and lungs. And then take your hand back down to the floor. Take your back knee onto the floor, bringing it into a hamstring stretch here. You can turn the leg out and in, maybe spending a couple of breaths parallel and a couple of breaths turned out. So again, the fascia is getting this more three-dimensional version of a stretch than just a static still stretch. And if you feel like it and you're up for it, go for your split here. We warmed up our hamstrings so much that they should be ready for some stretching. Breathing into it. And then bring it back. Take it into your lunge again. We're going to kick it back to a, a, a plank, to a downward dog. Walk your hands back towards your feet. And then slowly roll it up through your spine, coming all the way up to stand before we do the second side. Take a little walk around your space. Roll up or not. You can also stay down if you're fine. I just always, after I've been in like a downward dog or doing a lot of stuff, it happens to me in yoga all the time. My body really needs to readjust in standing before I go on. All right, let's take it back down and we're going to do the other side. So downward dog, whichever leg hasn't done it yet, up to the ceiling, knee into your chest. Inhale, lift, exhale, cross it under. Inhale, lift, outer shoulder. Inhale up, center, inhale up, cross it under, inhale up, outer shoulder. Third set, lift, center, lift, cross it under, lift outer shoulder, take it down, open your chest and lungs, breathe into it. Let that really open so you're spiraling and opening. Ha. Ah. And then hand back down, knee down, flex the front foot. You can turn it in and out, breathing into that. So for me, when I work the turnout, it's a totally different stretch in my lower leg. My hamstrings are super open, so I'm not really feeling it there at all. But I can feel the difference in my peroneals when I do it turned out compared to turned in. Take it into your split if you want to. Breathe. And then bring it back in. Take it back to a plank. Before we go up, we're just going to do some shoulder touches. So touching one and then the other. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. But to the ceiling. Walk it in, slowly roll it up, coming all the way up to the top. Shake everything out, especially shake out your wrists. Ugh. And we're going to have a two second break while I roll up my carpet and we're going to move. I know, it's hot. It's so hot here. Look at your little doggy. Oh, so cute. All right, and I'm going to stop recording. TV Land, please like and subscribe.